what's going on you guys so i wanted to post a video because there's some strategic command american civil war news here and it's i'm i'm very grateful uh because you'll see in a second on june 29th we'll be releasing the 1.08 pad for uh, strategic command american civil war in addition to the usual fixes and improvements and as a way of celebrating the first anniversary of the game's launch the update also includes a brand new campaign available for free to anyone who who owns the game in this developer diary we introduced 1904 imperial sunrise co covering the Ru russo japanese war free <laughs> this is the second uh conflict for this game that they released for free the first one was i believe for the um uh the um 1870s uh franco uh german war i believe correct me if i'm wrong the story of the Russo-Japanese War began with the Jap uh, Japan's victory over China in 1895. In a war lasting a mere eight months, Japan had destroyed the Chinese Navy, asserted Japanese influence over Korea, conquered Formosa, captured Port Arthur, perhaps the finest harbor in the region. Yet the link on the res uh, resultant treaty of, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, Sh Shimonoski, maybe I was close, had scarcely tried before uh, Russia with the support of France and Germany pressured Japan to return Port Arthur to China in exchange for enlarged war indemnity. The Tsar, whose contempt for the Japanese dated back to an attempted assassination during an 1891 state visit to the country. Wow, I didn't know that. Had his own ambitions in the Far East. With a few short years, Russia had deployed hundreds of thousands of soldiers in Manchuria, established fortified naval base at Port Arthur, and was making moves to gain influence in Korea, causing alarm in Tokyo. When negotiation with St. Petersburg stalled, the Japanese felt the only option left was war. Interesting. Sunrises. The campaign begins on the morning of February 9, 1904, and the Japanese players immediately face a decision that will shape the outcome of the war. In the Yellow Sea, Admiral Togo is stationed with the bulk of the combined fleet outside Port Arthur. The previous night, Japanese torpedo boats launched a surprise attack against the Russian Pacific fleet, damaging several ships but sinking none. And a decision that must now be regarding as a second strike. The Russian defense of Port Arthur not yet fully prepared, and damage suffered the previous night renders them vulnerable. However, a more cautious approach may be worth considering. Instead, Port Arthur, located at the tip of the Lidong Peninsula, is vulnerable to blockade by both land and sea. A sustained naval presence in the Yellow Sea, so supported by naval mines, may be able to trap the Russian Navy in port without a need for an immediate and costly battle, of course. That also risks the Russians attempting to fight their way out. Okay, I like this. I like this. Japan's greatest advantage lays in the preparation it has made before declaring war. Lessons learned from the war against China and the extensive training since have provided Japanese units with a significant advantage in experience, while generous recruitment of local civilians in China and Korea will provide Japan with a generally favorable supply situation and re regular intelligence updates like this. With Tokyo having realized that further negotiation with the Tsar government would be fruitless, by the end of 1903, the Imperial Army was mobilized and ready for battle. At the same time that Togo struck the Russian fleet at Port Arthur, detachments of the Imperial Japanese Army, First Army, were uh, disembarking at, I'm not going to pronounce it, Kem 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 Kemopo, repeating a maneuver that had served them so well 10 years prior. So that's, yeah. These units, the 2nd and 12th Divisions, as well as General, and I will pronounce his name, Kuroki headquarters was sufficient uh, was sufficient to ensure the capitulation of the Korean government, represent merely the forward detachments of the Japanese land campaign. The rest of the Imperial Army began, begins the campaign still stationed on the home islands. It will uh, it'll be up to you to manage their deployments in Korea and Manchuria, tasks that will require you to navigate shortages of transport ships, frozen harbors, or at least until those uh, ice melts. I love that feature. And the constant threat of Russian cruises. Playing as Russia, you will need to plan the deployment of your forces carefully. While the Tsar's army boats, army boats, <laughs> more than a million soldiers. Well, okay. I'll bet the lacking quality of the Japanese army. They are deployed primarily in Europe and Central Asia, far from likely battlefields in Manchuria. Russia's industrial po power dwarfs that of the Japanese, but the capacity of the Trans-Siberian Railroad limits the number of men that can send to the Far East. Unlike Japan, Russia's army, excepting the 100,000 men scattered across various small garrisons and regions, does not begin deployed on the map. Taking the place of vice Viceroy Al 
Kev, <laughs> you'll need to request which units to send to the Far East via the unit purchase screen. Sending these units will take time, forcing you to plan your battle several months in advance to ensure you have sufficient men on hand when the time comes. Very interesting. I like this. Very interesting. Oh, this is a big one. Wow, this is a big <laughs> dev uh, diary here. Okay, interesting. Uh, race against time, no matter which side you choose, the calendar will be your enemy. Uh, for for Japan, the reasons for this are oblivious, obvious. Going to war at all was a huge gamble by the leadership in Tokyo. As while well, Russia could count on nearly unlimited reserves of manpower, Japan, meanwhile, has virtually no reserves and with less access to foreign markets than the Russians. It also risks financial collapse if the war drags on too long. Interesting. I like that dynamic there. However, thanks to its pre-war preparations, Japan, provided the Imperial Navy can keep the supply routes to Korea open, can deploy its forces to the battlefield much more quickly than the Russians, providing them with short-lived quantitative advantage. Japan, therefore, faces a dilemma. A rapid advance offers the best advantage to deal a devastating blow to the Russian military before the numbers become too overwhelming. But this result in heavier casualties that Japan can ill afford and will erode the quality of their units, quality that may well prove difference in battles to come. Very interesting. I like this. I really do. So throw everything in and be assured to take a lot of land, but then face trouble down the road. Or... Uh, kind of take a more moderate approach and then, you know, things will be kind of in the air kind of thing, you know. Russia too, Russia too can scarcely afford delay. While, while in the long run, the strength of the Russian army in the Far East will grow to eclipse that of the Japanese. Initially, the Manchurian garrisons under General Zaskluv and Kurpatalin, I'm not going to pronounce it, will fix an overwhelming advance and merely 200 miles separate the Yalu River from Port Arthur, a distance the Japanese covered in just two months in 1894. Furthermore, the prestige and reputation of the Tsar himself have been st staked at on the outcome of the war, no Asian nation has ever defeated a Euro power, European power in a major conflict, placing enormous pressure on Russia to win. That's my son. <laughs> to win a swift and decisive victory, or risk great humiliation. With this content growing against the Tsar's autocratic region, per perhaps the Tsar's interior ministry said it best in order to prevent revolution, we need a little victorious war. Did you see the torpedo boat's success in this camp will ultimately depend on your ability to achieve mastery both on the land and sea. With the expectation of victory set to, uh, so high by leaders in both Tokyo and St. Petersburg, your nation's fighting spirit will be rapidly eroded by even small reverses. The sinking of a battleship, got to be careful, I guess. Or the capture of a mere provincial capital could be the difference between triumph and disaster. Wow. So be careful. Should the Imperial Navy fail to contain the Russian fleet in Port Arthur, Vladivostok, I said that right. <laughs> the Russians may be able to strike at the Japan's uh, fighting spirit more directly by imposing a blockade of Japan. Mm. By moving their warships even for only a brief time or on adjutant to any of the marked locations around the Japanese and Korean coastlines, Russia can disrupt Japanese trade and humiliate the Japanese Navy in a way that China never managed in 1894. The same blockade may even doom the Japanese overland campaigns as Russian warships can cut off sea routes between home islands and Korea prevents an uh, our army receiving reinforcements. Or will be the greatest reinforcements of all that determines the outcome of the war. Ooh, this is interesting. A battleship kind of war, you know. Carriers weren't around this time. The Russian Baltic Fleet is perhaps the conflict's most remarkable chapter historically. The Baltic Fleet, or 2nd Pacific Squadron, as it was officially called by, from mid-1904, embarked on an epic eight-month voyage halfway around the world, journey both odious and absurd, only to be destroyed at the Battle of Tsushima mere days before reaching their destination of Vladivostok. In the campaign, players will be provide a notification of the Baltic fleet's travels around the coast of Europe and Africa before the ships themselves deploy on the map in 1905. Pl plan for this carefully, and the arrival of, I'm not going to pronounce his name, Rojin, miserable fleet could be the decisive moment of the war. So this is the uh, the famed battle of the uh, Russia-Japanese war. This is going to be very interesting to play. The Empire's fate depends on the outcome of this battle. Let everyone do his best, Admiral Togo. Okay, so this, let me just go back up here to see, because they said the game, the DLC isn't going to come out 
on June 29th, which is yeah, 10 days away, a week and a half away. I really love that Matrix and, and the developers behind Strategic Command are <laughs> releasing another conflict for free. This is a huge thing, guys, because uh, it's very rare where you have a, <laughs> a developer uh, that releases extra content for free. Uh, only the really amazing ones usually do things like that. Um, the only time I think I've seen this was with, uh, was with uh, what do you call it, um, Imper Imperator Rome. And that's mainly because the launch was not so well, and so the you know following the releases they had to kind of like hey we're giving you this for free we're also giving you this for free you know so <laughs> but you know strategic command is doing well 86 percent uh fury software yeah these guys are legendary i, I love these guys uh but yeah guys i highly recommend picking this game up uh you got you, not only are you getting oh there's even a discount for it not only are you getting the american civil war you're getting the Spanish American War. I think you're also. Uh, I think there's also uh, that 1870s war. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the American uh, Civil War, uh, Spanish American War is free, and now you're also getting the Russia Japanese War for free. So very cool. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Catch the next one. See you then. I know.